solution. Some solutions are very good in India. If you look at uh, the community engagement, private sector engagement, and the engagement of uh, crowdfunding and the for-profit sector in TV. These are success stories in TV. We, we, we now I firmly believe that total replacement of microscopy with molecular tests, TrueNet uh, or any other molecular tests, uh, population level screening, screening with uh, ultra portable or portable X-rays is going to be one core key intervention which will take you towards TV elimination. So dream and keep sticking to your conviction, you will be able to uh, achieve your targets. Right. The world did not dream of TV elimination prior to 2015. Yes. The dream only uh, came when there were enabling provisions. Right. There was there is a molecular diagnostic, there is a private sector engagement model, and there are now treatment options which make you can have 100% cure. So imagine a disease which is 20,000 years old. Right. What changed 10 years ago that now you're talking of elimination? The only change which happened, happened 10 years ago or 12 years ago is that now you can diagnose TB in an hour and be 100% sure it is TB. You can treat TB almost uh, close to 90 to 100% cure and you can reach almost 90, 95% of the patients. So the three path breaking things have made you dream now and the four namaskar friends a very warm welcome to our august audience who have joined us today via social media as well as via zoom for this first episode of season two of cns inspire series that will feature stalwarts who have done commendable work in the field of health and development our guest for today has more than 35 years of experience in public health and has held senior positions in the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Starting as a medical officer in 1988 at the Directorate of Health Services, Government of Delhi, he rose to become the Deputy Director General of National AIDS Control Program and then Deputy Director General, Central TB Division in 2018. He led one of the biggest national health programs in India the National TB Elimination Program, or NTEP, which was formerly called RNTCP. The largest national TB prevalence survey of India was also conducted in 2019 during his tenure. The National Strategic Plan 2017-2025 was also shaped under his leadership. He has also served as a nodal officer at the Global Fund for TB, HIV, and malaria, and has held the position of Regional Director, Southeast Asia Office of International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Health. Currently, he's President, CMO of Mole Biodiagnostics. And despite wearing so many crowns, and despite his numerous achievements, I have yet to come across such a modest, soft-spoken, and down-to-earth public expert. I am honored to welcome none other than Dr. Kuldeep Singh Sajdeva as the first speaker to inaugurate session two of CNS Inspire series. Welcome, sir. We are very grateful to you for finding time for us today. Thanks, Shubha, and thanks for that generous introduction. Yeah. No, that, that, that is very little of what actually I should have said, sir. Uh, sir, CNS has had the privilege of following your stunning journey and speaking with you several times in the past. In 2016, when you were leading India's National AIDS Control Program, we had interviewed you during season one of CNS Inspire series. Since then, a lot of water has flown over and below our heads. Would you like to take, uh, we would like to rather take you back to the moment when you took charge as Deputy Director General TB in 2018. And one thing we will like to know more about is that brilliant national strategic plan that was shaped under your leadership at NTEP. Please share your reflections on implementing NSP and taking India towards TB elimination targets. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Shobha. So sir, NSP, we were not doing for the first time uh, 
in 2018. We had done that one earlier. Only thing is that uh, the ambition changed there on. And what we realized that if you have to eliminate TB, you have to have some instruments to do that. And we recognize that NSP can be one instrument to advocate and get a buy-in from uh, political leaders and also from bureaucracy to see what we want to do. I mean, if you put something on paper and articulate it well, you uh, get more eyeballs and more uh, people to listen to you. And that articulation, uh, it was overtly ambitious. We must admit that. And that, and it was very intentional to make it overtly ambitious so that uh, at least we are able to show the pathway of TB elimination to them. And also sort of uh, say that this is what we need. And generally, as you know, when you ask for something, you don't get what, whatever you ask for. So the idea was that we get not incremental, but substantial hike in um, support, both uh, human resource as well as financial. And which which is very evident in the with the fact that the budget almost tripled in next uh, five years. Even though we, we actually asked for six, seven times more what we were getting, but we, we could actually uh, take it to 300%. More level, yeah. It was a very forward-looking plan from what we have seen uh, and uh, taking India towards TB elimination through detect, treat, prevent, build. And even at that time, it was talking of finding all people with TB, detecting TB, uh, using the best of tests and gradual removal of microscopy. There were, I think, and it was a costed plan. At least for three years, it was a costed plan, I think. And With the revision, we costed it till 2025. Yes. Mm -hmm. So costed it for actually seven years at that point of time. Uh, so yes. that uh, we sync with the 2025 goal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we would really want to hear some life-changing milestones you achieved during that. Of course, NSP, I think, was one milestone. Another was the National TB Prevalence Survey. But uh, any other milestones and achievements you would like to share with us? I think the most significant uh, milestone uh, in TB has been uh, engagement of private sector. So, and we started that very early on. We realized that we were at one part of time get a, stuck at a maximum TB case notification of 14 to 16 lakh cases for almost three, four years. So with our best of efforts, we were not able to increase it. And that, and it was a common knowledge even then that, that uh, almost 70-80% of the patients approach private sector first. And then we started actually uh, opening up program to private sector, being more friendly to them, giving them the all the parks take money, had an intermediary. And uh, the I think the most significant is that private sector notification from just about under uh, two to three thousand is currently about eight lakhs now every year under the program. So almost one third, every third patient now comes from private sector. So two by the government program, one by the private sector program. So that's been the most significant achievement and what we uh, say uh, estimate the number of cases every year and what we are able to reach out and put on treatment. There is still a gap, but that gap has been reduced substantially. So now we almost reach 95, more than 90% of the patients that we estimate are available in the country. Okay, That's the most significant achievement. There have been numerous achievements. I think the most significant is you are able to reach everybody. And your all efforts then start picking up from there. Yes, but we would like you to share a few more. I know there have been very many maybe significant. Yeah, so uh, the private sector is one. Mm -hmm. The other is uh, uh, introduction of uh, replacement of smear microscopy with molecular diagnostics. So as a policy, we uh, had it about six, seven years ago. In practice, we also know that there is always a policy and practice gap. And the policy is again an enabling provision to get more resources, ask for more resources. So initially we had just about, uh, I think, a dozen of 
molecular testing equipment, initially gene expert at that point of time. Today in country, you have almost uh, 8,000 uh, test molecular testing equipment. Most of it is now Indian made uh, rather than the foreign made. So almost the uh, balance is also skewed more in front of favor of Indian made uh, molecular testing equipment, which is about 7,000 and the the other one, the foreign made is about 1,000. So, so th and with this, at that point of time, we estimated we were doing about a crore of presumptive TB examination every year. And we estimated that these machines will be able to take care of all uh, replacement of all smear microscopy. So the challenge currently has been on uh, the funding side uh, of this. But in principle, uh, the replacement has been accepted. We are doing almost a crore to uh, almost about a crore of tests with molecular diagnostics. But now the presumptive TV examination has gone up from one crore to two crores. So that way we are uh, almost 50% of people are uh, getting tested with the newer uh, diagnostic methods very early. So that's another rollout of newer drugs. I mean, we, which is bridaculin, predominant now delaminate, so all newer drugs. The best part is now that the treatment duration has been cut from about two and a half years to almost six months to one year for drug resistant TB. The outcomes have improved from almost about 30% to nearly 75% today. So earlier we were losing almost 70 out of 100. We now are able to treat and cure almost 75 to 80 out of 100. That's the most significant patient-friendly uh, introduction of newer drugs. And a few other newer initiatives have been engaging community at scale. So community engagement has actually now gone on scale. So each district, each state has uh, so-called uh, TB volunteers or TB Petras, and they are helping program to reach out to the community. So that's another. And uh, we also wrote out what is called as a crowdfunding for patients with TB Mukt Bharat Abhiyan. And this is one of its kind in the, in the world. So we are actually ordinary people in the country are helping their uh, fellow patients and fellow uh, citizens to uh, sort of help negotiate the journey of cure to TB and supporting them with nutrition. They can in whatever small way, they thousand rupees or 2,000 rupees a year for benefit. So almost uh, 10 to 15 lakh, which is say 2,000 rupees a year of the most significant uh, achievements under the TV program. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to uh, uh, mention one more achievement. You are talking of uh, cost and uh, so much of money coming in. Uh, you had shared with us that in, uh, in the year 2000, uh, you, uh, you had helped in developing essential drug list and essential list of surgical mm -hmm. consumables for uh, Delhi government. And through a little simplification of the process of procurement of drugs and surgical consumables, you were able to save uh, more than 40%, uh, a, a result in more no. than 40% of savings. Savings so, to you. Yes. So that, that I think was a big achievement. And then there was no shortage of drugs at that time because of that. I think you saved around 200 crores. Uh, yeah, so that, that was at, even in TB program and Bidaclin was first introduced. Hmm. First patient course was for seventeen thousand dollars. Okay. Now it is two hundred dollars. Yes. Yes. See the difference. Yes. Right. 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 Uh, so uh, yeah. you have talked about the indigenous molecular test. I will be coming to that uh, later also. Any any bitter memories about? Uh, you should not call it bitter because that's a challenge of program yes. managers. Yes. If there are yes. no problems, then we are not needed. <laughs> so that's what I tell all my colleagues and juniors also. That we are there, I'm a program manager because something is not going well. Yes. If everything goes well, then you are not needed. So uh, the challenge is sometimes uh, to convert your aspirations into a policy and implementation takes time. So we have seen challenge initially in the introduction of molecular diagnostics. 
I mean, they were introduced somewhere in 2012, but by the time we could actually take them to some scale, it was 2014 and 15. So th those those are the initial challenges. We also uh, wanted to uh, shift from an alternate day therapy in TB earlier to a daily therapy. That took quite some time. Yes. It was hard convincing the policy because, because costs of drugs were increasing. Mm -hmm. But private sector was not... Uh, getting roped in because of the intermittent uh, therapy. So we realized early on that if we don't change our regimen, we will not be able to get private sector. So that convincing took some time, generation of evidence, etc. Took some time. It took about two to three years to make that change because the cost of drug increased about 1.8 times at that point of time. But you see dividends in the form of that. Now we have uh, been able to detect 50 to 60 percent more patients than we were detecting then yes so if we were able we were able to reach 15 lakh patients now we are able to reach about 25 lakh patients every year now so the results are there to see now i mean which sometimes uh, uh, policy makers and bureaucrats are not able to see what we are trying to do they look at core economics but the economics is patient welfare and uh, TB elimination, future costs. So, but those results are very well there to now see. So similarly, first time we tried to introduce bedaculin, uh, the challenge was not more on the policy side, the challenge was more on the implementation side. Many practitioners were very reluctant to put patients on a new drug, fearing side effects, outcomes. It took, took us almost three years engaging with them, state by state, district by district, with physicians to make them confident, make them confident to put patients on new drugs. So, uh, but these are the challenges. I mean, you may call them whatever bitter experiences, frustrating experiences, but I think th this is what uh, all managers have to negotiate. Yeah, rightly so. And I remember when the when bedaculin was introduced, I remember when I was also hounding you with questions that why is not everybody getting bedaculin? And in your very simple, suave manner, you were really addressing all of them. I I, I remember all, all of those. Mm -hmm. And when we admit, I had met you first, I think about 15 years ago, and then the alarm on drug resistant TB had gone out already. And you yeah. were one. You were one of those who was tasked to scale up India's capacity of managing drug-resistant TB. And uh, as you have said right now about microscopy, and also at that time there were very few uh, bios uh, safety level yeah. three labs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, where drug uh, testing for drug-resistant TB could be done. Uh, and the, even that was very time-consuming. And today, as you have mentioned, we have inno innovative new technologies for diagnosing TB. And uh, now, not just every city, I think the new molecular test you were talking of, what that is TrueNet, which has yeah. been built in India, yeah. uh, it, is in my, it is even at the block level. Uh, in many blocks, uh, I think, have got it in India, not so just almost cities. All blocks have a TrueNet or a molecular yes. diagnostic. Yes. Yes. Uh, in some cases, more than one in a block, because now you have uh, close to 8,000 TrueNet around thousand plus gene experts so mm -hmm. if you have 6500 blocks you have almost 1.5 times of that uh, capacity available for molecular diagnostics so you have on an average you have 1.5 per block okay. mm -hmm. some may have more some may have yeah. less so, so that uh, may be there but on an average you have now sufficient capacity for testing everybody with the molecular diagnostics Yes. So I would just like to mention here for the those who are uninitiated in our audience that our indigenously made TrueNAT test is the only WHO recommended point of care, decentralized, laboratory independent and battery operated molecular test globally. Please correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, sir. No, that that's right. Yes. That's right. The beauty is yes. that you can actually carry it in a brief yes. case. Yes. Do it, do it anywhere. So, I mean, we recently met someone uh, from a UN agency and we took that to his room and showed him that it's possible. Yeah. So now uh, the, uh, that's what they are doing in active case finding home to home search. Now you can carry your machines along with you or on a mobile. So truly closer to home, home. not in the bedrooms now, but, no, but 
almost close to your doorstep. Yes, yes, yes. All, almost at the doorstep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and I, re I recently yeah. read a Stop TB Partnership social media post uh, where it shared that TrueNAT molecular test is making a major impact in nine countries as part of their innovative new technologies project. And I think it's being used in around 70 countries or so. Almost, I think, 80 countries. Okay, uh, okay. Use that, uh, this platform, yeah. Yes. But, sir, microscopy is still being used to test for TB, and we are still missing TB cases. So, how can we find all TB and replace microscopy 100%? Is it uh, as soon as possible? Is it that difficult? or what So, again, the question was uh, economics versus the patient benefit. Even at that point, introducing, I said, molecular diagnosing initially took some time. See, microscopy costs 50 rupees. This will cost you at least 500 to 600 rupees. But the benefit is that you are detecting them much earlier, yes, two months earlier. And again, we are seeing some of those benefits being translated now. I'm talking of 2012, 2013, when we were trying to introduce. As I told you, the fixed dose combination or daily therapy when we introduce, we see additional 10 to 12 lakh patients every year. Similarly, with the introduction of molecular diagnostics, you, you now see a decline in incidence, which is much more than what we had historically had. So we historically had about just about 1% decline in incidence. Now we are close to reaching 5% in some areas. On an average, it is between 3 and three to 5%. So decline in incidence is uh, almost now 3 to 4 times what it used to be in those years. And that is where now, because of these molecular diagnostics, newer drugs, private sector engagement, we can think of elimination now. At least it is in the dream. We never dreamt it in 2015. Right. The world did not dream of TV elimination prior to 2015. Yes. The dream only uh, came when there were enabling provisions. Right. There was There is a molecular diagnostic. There is a private sector engagement model, and there are now treatment options which make you can have 100% cure. So imagine a disease which is 20,000 years old. What changed 10 years ago that now you're talking of elimination? The only change which happened, happened 10 years ago or 12 years ago is that now you can diagnose TB in an hour and be 100% sure it is TB. You can treat TB almost uh, close to 90 to 100% cure, and you can reach almost 90, 95% of the patients. So the three path-breaking things have made you dream now. And the fourth, which is being added now, is uh, X-rays, portable or ultra-portable X-rays, which again you can carry with you and do X-ray anywhere uh, at the doorstep, inside patient's house, inside their drawing rooms, you now can click X-ray pictures. So this is the fourth major change which will uh, accelerate the dream of uh, TB elimination. So ultra-portable X-rays. And with that, uh, we are also coming up with the uh, algorithm or paradigm called population level screening. So screen the entire population with X-rays. Those who are X-ray show some sort of X-ray shadow, subject them um, to TrueNet or a molecular diagnostics. Those who are positive, treat them 100 with 100% cure. And that is where we aim that we'll be able to accelerate TB decline in TB incidence very fast and uh, achieve our goal of sustainable development goals very quickly. I'm not giving a time frame to it, but I think we can do that uh, very quickly. Uh, thank you, sir. sir. I would like you to share also uh, the importance of x-rays and why verbal screening is not enough. I think your prevalence survey also showed that there were many asymptomatic uh, TB patients. So uh, that that idea of verbal screening does not work always. Can so, the, yeah. so verbal screening, you will only get those who are have a very high index of suspicion. Yes, yes. So by the time you begin to manifest some symptoms or illness, you're too advanced. Yes. So they say almost 60% of the patients never complained of any symptom. They will complain of some symptoms six months down the line, eight months down the line, three months down the line, but then the disease will be in an advanced stage 
and they would have transmitted this disease to yes. their uh, family members, their friends, their co-workers. But if you do an X-ray, screen them in an X-ray, you detect them when they are not transmitting the disease. It is in very early stages. And that is what is now going to make the most impact on decline in incidence. So uh, I see a question there. There is no radiation risk from ultra portable X-rays. Uh, it's almost you get uh, less than 1% of the dose which you get on conventional X-rays. So if you do, of course, 100, 150 X-rays on the same individual, the risk will match. Yeah. So, but you are not going to do that. You are just going to click one picture. So uh, it's near zero risk uh, with the ultra portable X-rays. And, uh, and this is what is now going to be a game changer in the TB field. And this is what is now going to see you and take you to an accelerated decline in incidence. I give a time frame, I don't give a time frame, but maybe within the next five, 10 years, you can actually see India becoming, uh, uh, the disease becoming not, not being a public health problem at all. You will not totally eliminate it, but it will be, the incidence will be so low that like in most developed countries. Okay, that is that is good hope and yes, we we are really hoping for that. If things go the way they are going, yes. Uh, also, how do we ensure? Yes, the the drugs are there and uh, uh, success rate has increased, but still we are, uh, uh, as somebody had said that as of now, uh, one uh, one in five of uh, drug susceptible TB patients and one in two of drug resistant TB patients are getting cured in India. Is is that true or please correct me if I'm wrong? So uh, uh, there are various ways to look at statistics. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so you say if you have a hundred patients in the community mm -hmm. and you reach out to 80% mm -hmm. and you cure, say cure 80% of them, you are actually curing only 60% yes. of estimated in the community. Right, but right. practically, now we are able to reach 90% of the patients and cure 90%. Mm -hmm. So we are very close to actually curing 75-80% of the people in the community. The more you intensify your efforts, the more the implementation improves, we'll be very close to actually curing almost 90% of the patients in the community. So that's one. Drug resistant TB, I already alluded to earlier, that now we are able to cure almost 75% of those detected. Mm -hmm. Again, how do you look at statistics? Yes. So I have 100 MDRTB patients. I detect 75% of them, cure 75% of them. So actually what I'm doing is I'm curing about somewhere but around 60% of the, the total cases being available. So the key lies in reaching out to all the patients, detecting them very early. So that is where I said ultra portable X-rays, yes. your molecular diagnostics will help you to close this gap. Right. And if you are able to reach 80 percent, 90 percent, then that that's good for uh, public health programming. We'll be able to see a rapid decline in incidence. Yeah, and it will also prevent uh, transmission, as you it, said, because the yeah. the the later you uh, diagnose TB, the more that uh, infection has spread yeah. in the community. More it is transmissible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's in the interest of everyone, even those who do not have TB. It's in our interest also that. The transmission is cut off and we prevent the transmission. Right? Yeah, so that's why we say if I have hypertension, it's the, my problem. If I have TV, it is your yes. problem. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> or any other infectious disease yes. for that. Yes. Matter. If yes. I have yes. COVID, it is your problem. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If I have diabetes, that is not your not problem. problem. It is my problem. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so you had once said that we should develop models of care, rightly so, which are community oriented and public health oriented. What, according to you, is the complete casket of TB care? Is it just uh, diagnosing and treating, or does it go beyond that? So now with, again, newer technologies being available, we are now uh, revising the cascade of TB care. So initially, the cascade of TB care used to start the moment the patient feels some symptom of disease, mm -hmm. which, according to prevalence survey, out of 100, only 40% will give you some symptom. So if you start your cascade with 40 people and then your earlier question is very right. By the time you finish your cascade, treat 90% of those 40 people, diagnose them early, you are only treating 35 out of 100. 
but now if you start your cascade by population level screening by x-rays portable or ultra portable whatever you call them yes. then you will be able to catch almost 90 treat 90 of them so which is you will be able to reach 80 out of 100 so see from 35 you immediately jump to 80 and do it over a period of two, three, few, four, five years, and you will see a rapid decline in incidence. I anticipate you will see almost 60 to 70 percent decline in incidence. It will not remain a public health problem by then if you are able to do that for the next five years. So, what is crucial is that you screen with X rays everyone, and the uh, the bonus or the uh, so, sort of uh, the uh, what you get in addition is that you also are able to get other diseases if they have any other thing. So you are trying to offer a holistic care there. And yeah, then, sir, I just want to uh, ask a question here. Uh, yeah. Because uh, I have been following you for quite a long time. And mm -hmm. uh, sir, uh, what about the role of AI? I mean, because we are just trying that out in places where we don't have uh, these portable X-rays or ultra portable X-rays. Uh, because uh, we are just foraying into that arena of uh, like cuff for TB. Uh, because in some of our inaccessible areas uh, where we can't have these portable X-rays or ultra portable X-rays or till they come. So we want to know what is the role of AI going to be? Like we are uh, employing cuff for TB. So AI is not cuff for TB. AI is uh, improving your diagnostic capacity through a machine learning. Yes. It can be with an X-ray, it can be with a cuff sound, or it can be with any other thing. So cuff for TB uh, is being investigated by many uh, people. Currently, it has not reached that stage uh, where we can say that uh, we can use it with certainty to find out people who are presumptive TB. So th there are still a lot of false positive, false negative, those issues are there. Having said that, people are refining these algorithms very quickly and okay. taking it further. So what you need to do, people, what people are doing with Cuff for TB is that they are trying to uh, refine their algorithm with those who test positive and did the Cuff for TB actually throw them up as uh, positive uh, presumptive TB. If you try to uh, define algorithms with an X-ray, and a cuff for TB and see that how much overlap you can get, you will get better results. So people are not trying various algorithms, but I expect that within, uh, again, 6 to 12 months, you will have some solution on cuff for TB, which is as good as an uh, X-ray. But still at this point of time, a solution comparable to an ultra portable X-ray is not there with cuff for TB with the AI. But we are expecting that with so many uh, uh, scientists working on this, we will have a solution soon. Currently, it's showing somewhere about sensitivity of between 60 to 70 percent. We still want to improve on this uh, sensitivity. But having said that, something is better than nothing. If you yes. don't have an ultra portable, you can do. But with a clear frame of mind that you you are like still likely to miss with this technology. So because we want to use this uh, in our active case finding, uh, because where we won't have you no know, portable X-rays or ultra portable X-rays available, so we, we have to, one more tool. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to tell you. If you screen people for X-ray, it's very sensitive. So all those who are presumptive TB will get captured. You will get additional cases who may not be presumptive TB. They may have other diseases. So. Whatever you detect as suspicious or presumptive with X-ray, you will find TB only among them. Yeah, right, sir. Those who are tested negative with X-ray, you are unlikely to find TB among them. Of course, there will be some cases. But with cuff for TB, currently that is not there. If cuff for TB tells you that somebody does not have TB, you may still have a group of people who will have TB from that group who, which has been excluded so this is the algorithm which is being currently refined so do what you can also generate your own evidence at some point of time and uh, feed into the national uh, evidence but that's uh, 
what you should do. But yes, it's good that you are trying to uh, close the gap between. Uh, it's anyway, it will be better than verbal screening and other things. You can also combine it with, with verbal screening if you're looking at a very cost efficient tool. But bear in mind, it has still not reached that level of sensitivity and specificity that you can use it with certainty. Right, sir. Thank you, and sir. And thank you to the SDO of Kashmir for asking that question. And uh, actually, it has helped all of us in clearing the doubts. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sir, having spent decades in India in helping shape India's TB and HIV responses, what was it like taking charge as regional director, Southeast Asia Office of International Union against tuberculosis and lung disease? moving from a national role to a regional role, which covers Southeast Asia? No, it's always, I mean, when you have an idea and you also uh, can actually replicate your success in some areas into yes, other parts of the globe. And it's all, ultimately TB is transmissible because people move. Yes, okay, that's a good one. <laughs> If people don't move, then you can confine to your own geography. Yeah. And these days, people movement has become much more frequent than it used to be earlier. What you saw with COVID. So what they were trying to stop your movement at that point of time. Yes, yes, yes. You can do it for a limited period of time, but you can't do it for a chronic disease like TB. Though we debated at that point of time, can could we have done this for TB at some point of time, stop people's movement and so that it gets confined to one area. But then these are not practical solutions. So bearing in mind that these are not practical solutions, people keep moving, so TB will keep getting transmitted. Except the very, very developed countries which don't issue a visa. If you have any sign or any uh, X-ray shadow and you even test positive on a latent TB, they, subject to a battery of tests. So they are trying to see that you don't import TB into their country. Some countries are doing that. But that's an extreme step because they, they don't want to import uh, TB into their country. More or less, you will not be able to stop people moment. So yes. you we have to have a global solution. Mm -hmm. Some solutions are very good in India. If you look at uh, the community engagement, private sector engagement and the engagement of uh, crowdfunding and the for-profit sector in TB. These are success stories in TB. Right. Look so, at Southeast Asia. India has been able to saturate almost 50% of the expected people who should be put on uh, preventive TB treatment. No other country in uh, the within the region Southeast Asia has reached even 25% of that aspect. So we are way ahead in that. So similarly, uh, the introduction of newer drugs was much better in uh, other parts of the globe. People implemented the introduction of bidacloin, delaminate, pentaminate much earlier than we, we had been able to do that. So there are lessons and cross lessons to be learned from uh, all sides. So it's a good journey to get that global view and uh, see how, where we can uh, find the best fit for your interventions. The interventions on um, ultra portable x-rays and population level screening are also coming from the other, these learnings are also coming from other parts of the globe. Mm -hmm. So, and they are very practical down to earth learnings which are implementable. The issues are the resources, but you can also modify your implementation as per your local context. So things are working in a better way in many states in that context. So it's a cross pollination of ideas, cross fertilization of interventions, which helps you. And, and now from the regional level, you have moved on to the global level, sir, transitioning from building rock solid diagnostic capabilities in India to getting a chance to influence diagnostic capabilities worldwide as president CMO at Molbio, uh, which is manufacturing TrueNAT because uh, now you you are going you are in a position to influence other countries as well now i firmly believe that total replacement of microscopy with molecular tests true net or any other molecular tests population level screening screening with the ultra portable or portable x-rays is 
going to be one core key intervention which will take you towards tb elimination and this will happen very quickly if you are able to do that and sort of uh, seed this idea in the entire globe so while some countries are doing that not everybody is able to screen with ultra portable x rays screen with the molecular diagnostics so there are you, you'll see many countries which are where we were about 10 to 15 years earlier they are still there so we, we should be able to uh, in the interest of the patients and the population at large we should be able to uh, sort of steer them or guide them to take a pathway which will uh, sort of take them closer towards uh, meeting sustainable development goals and reduce future costs. As I alluded, the economics you see after 10, 15 years, we see the economics of uh, doubling our cost on uh, fixed dose regimens now. We see the economics of introduction of bidaclin 10 years from when we introduce now. Uh, now. So we'll see the economics of investment in ultra portable X-rays, replacement of sphere microscopy very quickly in next five to 10 years. Yes, and I think they have done uh, uh, yeah. modeling and, and studies about $1 spent on TB, how much is the return you get? So that yeah. it, it, it makes a lot of economic sense also. You yeah. get a lot more return than what you're spending. Models and models, you are still actually not very convinced about those models. Mm -hmm. But now you see what you model 10 to 15 years ago, you, their results are your, yes. in front of your eyes. So you can as well trust your future models that yes. they will also pay off in a similar manner. Yes. So you have summed up so many things, sir. But once again, looking forward, what needs to happen and happen differently so that we achieve that goal of eliminating TB as soon as we can? So one enabling provision which we need is a vaccine. Yes. Okay. And yes. I'm, 100% sure you will see a globally approved vaccine in next two to three years. Oh, they are all in phase three clinical trials. Mm -hmm. You should get a vaccine very quickly. And that's that will be final uh, portion, that armamentarium towards TB elimination. So you will have, you'll have completed then the entire spectrum on the science side of it. So once you have all spectrum on the science side of it, then yes. there is a spectrum on the management or implementation side of it, which the program managers then need to show to the world that yes, the, they can do it and they'll make it happen. Uh, your advice and message for those working in public health and anything else you would like to share, which I might have missed out. Well, I say if you can dream big, you actually can yeah. make it happen. So I've seen, uh, I mean, in my own journey, I've seen whatever you set out and decide to do, you are able to do it. Your time frame may vary. Somebody may be able to do it, convert something into a policy in one year. Somebody may do it in two years, but if you are persistent, you will achieve it. And that's uh, that's what I've seen that if you keep sticking to your uh, conviction, you are able to make it happen. And so, so dream and keep sticking to your conviction, you will be able to uh, achieve your targets. Okay. Uh, there is a question for you, uh, I think, in the chat box. Uh, what is your message for trans of transitioning from decades of clinical work to decades of public health administration? Any reflections or message on that? No, both sides are equally satisfying. Uh, it's not that uh, one is better than the other. Uh, it's only uh, as you grow go through your life journey things keep changing but uh, in public health your one policy intervention with one stroke can benefit uh, millions and lakhs and crores of people in clinical you are more personalized care so you see the immediate reward in forms of gratification etc in public health gratification comes much later so that's why i'm saying what we did 10 years ago we see that gratification now but in clinical work, you see the gratification immediately from patient, from relatives, etc. But both sides are equally re rewarding, equally challenging. I like the medical science per se. You touch human lives and you make a difference. Okay. So uh, I think uh, we are really very grateful to you.
uh, and we were talking to Dr. Kuldeep Singh Sajdeva, who's a, who needs no introduction and whatever I said about him is, is just a drop in the ocean of what he really is. So thank you for being with us today and thanks to the audience for listening to the golden pearl words of Dr. Sajdeva. Thank you very much. Thanks, thank uh, Shobha, and thanks all the participants present here. Thank you. Thank thank you.